the legend. I don't like to race. I just like to win. You either love him or you hate him. The champ. If they race me clean, I race them clean. If they race me dirty, I race them dirty. The rookie. I can't believe we won that fast sometimes. Three men locked in a showdown. 30 million fans. Eldora, World 100! It's the biggest race of the year. The 35th annual World 100 Eldora Speedway takes the green! Dirt Track Warriors, the battle for the big prize. Before NASCAR, they raced on dirt. They still do. 800 tracks in 49 states. 30 million fans every year. An estimated billion dollar a year business. Dirt track racing is the biggest sport you've never heard of. There's a lot of action all the time so close and any seat in the house you're right on top of the action the dirt flying in the air there's dirt in your beer there's dirt in your hamburger something that's in your face literally the dirt's in your face when you leave you're running sideways and you're on the gas and you're throwing dirt over the fence i can't believe we're going that fast sometimes and the noise and violence of the contact Whew. Exciting. <laughs> Among the fan favorites, legendary bad boy Scott Bloomquist. Some people call him the man, the myth, the mystery. It'll be Scott Bloomquist going to victory lane. People say that Scott Bloomquist is the greatest dirt late model driver ever. One star, Chubzilla, back in the winner's circle. In Chubzilla, Chub Frank. He's a rags to riches story. $20,000 feature. He's a family man. He's a grandfather. And if he doesn't win, they don't buy groceries and they don't pay the rent. And the kid, 17-year-old Josh Richards. He's an up-and-coming superstar. There he is, Kid Rocket! This is one kid and has a natural-born, God-given talent. But anybody can race on dirt. Here in Wayne County Speedway, the first of three nights of racing. We sure do appreciate you coming out. Dirt track racing is Americana. It's grassroots, it's blue collar, and it's uh, all across the United States. Doc Lehman has been involved with dirt track racing for more than 40 years. He co-hosts an internet radio show on the sport. Dirt racing is, is for anybody and everybody that can build a race car and get out there and compete. Short tracks, Saturday night dirt track racing is, is like the summertime equivalent of Friday night football. Tim Lee is editor of Dirt Late Model magazine. In smaller towns, it's a center of community where people gather and for local racing, they go watch their cousin or their brother or their mechanic out there doing their thing. There you go. And when the big races come to town, they go to see their heroes like your Scott Bloomquist, Thanks, guys. Chubb Franks and whoever. All right. Got it. Okay. Race For now, NASCAR driver Tony Stewart tips his hat to the skill of dirt drivers. After all, he got his start on dirt and now owns one of the most celebrated dirt tracks in the country, Eldora Speedway in Ohio. Being on a dirt track a lot of times is like being on a gravel road. If you go just a little bit too fast, the car's gonna slide. If you hit the gas too hard, uh, it spins the tires and kicks the rocks up. If you try to stop too fast, you, you skid, you lock up the brakes. That's what makes driving on dirt more technical. Technical indeed. Stewart wiped out the night we saw him race at Eldora. Me personally, most of the NASCAR races, and I'll turn them on, I'll be asleep after the first 20, and I hope somebody wakes me up for the last 10. Bloomquist, Frank, and the kid drive flimsy, high-horsepower racing machines called Dirt Late Model. It's one of the most exotic race cars on the planet. They're cutting edge. It's innovative. 
with motor, they're about 2,200 pounds. They're light as a feather. They're bad fast. They're faster than an Xtel Cup car. The race every dirt late model driver wants to win happens every September at Eldora. Everyone that races a dirt late model, that's the holy grail with them, is to win the World 100. Racers from Georgia and Iowa and Illinois and Pennsylvania all met in this one place. This little track in the middle of a cornfield in Ohio. Eldora, World 100, yeah! The World 100 is like a gathering of the tribes. People come from coast to coast, from north, south, east, west, and even out of the, out of the United States. Tony Stewart! The fans are like nothing I've seen anywhere. These people, they live it. I come up here for the race and the party, Ryder. I love the race. I will not go to a NASCAR race. People hate me to go to a NASCAR race. All night partying going on in the campgrounds. Good drinking, a lot of fun, good racing. First time I was here, I came here, I got hit by a boulder. That's what happened. Hit my cheek. I had a cheek. I, I was all He's swollen. Okay. <laughs> it was a great time. There's partying in the morning, the daytime, the evening. No Burkhopper! And it starts all over until the next day. If you run a NASCAR, you want to win Daytona. If you drive a dirt late model, you want to win the World 100 Eldora. They don't care what it pays, they want the trophy. It's bragging rights, it's a career maker. Scott Bloomquist has won the world three times. I feel confident with the car and uh, I love racing here, so I'm looking forward to it. Chubb Frank is the defending champ. Definitely, if we could win two in a row, that would be awesome. Josh Richards hopes to qualify for the first time. Oh, that would definitely be the race to win. The 28 charter members of the fraternal order of Go Fast will take the green. If you win the World 100, you pretty much can put your name at the top of the list as saying, hey, I was the best dirt late model driver for that year. History is about to be made at the 35th annual World 100 Eldora Speedway takes the green. Far away from the noise and the dirt, the road to Eldora and the World 100 passes through heartland places like Mooresburg, Tennessee. This is the family compound of Scott Bloomquist. You know, I love coming home. I like to kick ass and win races. But when it's over, I like to go home. This is kind of like the uh, place to get away from it all, where no one even can find you kind of a contrast from racing. A contrast, too, from his carefully crafted outlaw image. The skull, the shackles and chains, the no weak links. It's a symbol of strength. Yeah, you see a skull on something, you pretty much know not to with it, right? How's it going over there? It's good. Bloomquist will certainly go down in dirt racing history. 2005 marked his 25th year of racing. He has more than 400 first place finishes. In one year, an astonishing 35 wins in 44 starts. That'll work. Let's go with it. I bring an intensity to the racetrack that you're going to have to race all day long. And if you outrun me, you'll have earned it. Bloomquist grew up in Southern California. Unlike most dirt drivers, he was not born into the sport, but he got hooked at age 16. More than 25 years later, Bloomquist is a living dirt track legend in the hills of East Tennessee. His father, Ron, a retired airline pilot, moved the family there to give Scott a chance to grow as a racer. Surfer dude meets hillbilly. <laughs> I felt like an alien. I go uh, down to the local swimming pool and, uh, you know, I get pink and light blue on my shorts and uh, obviously they're looking at you like, what is this? What began with a $3,000 car has grown into a successful family business. 
sponsorships, the paid crew, Illinois, fan club, Kentucky, and $200,000 worth of merchandise sales a year. Scott's mother, Georgie. We didn't know it was ever going to get this big. Dirt wasn't this big back then. It was just a hobby, something fun to go do. Chubb Frank runs a much leaner operation in Bear Lake, Pennsylvania, near the New York border. He was driving on dirt before he was in school. I was born into it, I guess you could say, and I sat on my uncle's lap when I was four, but I, by the time I was five, I was driving by myself. Mainly at the dirt track down the road, owned by his father, Jerry. State line speedway. I taught him everything he knows. <laughs> I love that. No, he, you know, really, he took to it. Uh, it didn't have much to do with me other than we had the racetrack and and I made a racing bum out of him, basically. Barnstorming the region, Frank became known as the shoestring traveler, a man who did a lot with a little. When we were traveling in the early 90s and stuff, we were doing it with an old Suburban and an open trailer. The, the Suburban had like 260,000 miles on it. And it was terrible to drive in it. His wife Mary yeah, suffered along with him. South. The air conditioning didn't work and the engine overheated and you couldn't put your feet on the floor because your feet would burn up. <laughs> we were racing with them guys and actually beating them with limited funds. With success came a new nickname. Chubzilla. Everybody's got a nickname on, uh, on the, in racing just about. So what is a Chubzilla? I guess it's a, he's kind of a, he's kind of aggressive, he's kind of aggressive, but, but likable guy, how's that? There's still some shoestring traveler in him, though. Frank owns all his own equipment, but with no big money sponsor, he must win races to survive. This year, there's added pressure to pay for a new garage, a fire the winter before destroyed the old one. There's what our... Our garage used to look like. He lost everything, all his trophies, all his checks. Our fire. <laughs> that face there tells all his emotions. It's a very disappointed face. We've been trying to get caught back up with getting this new garage done and everything. Uh, and it's actually starting to show now a little bit. We're struggling a little bit and we need to get back to just doing racing and not worry about everything else. Uh, then we can, you know, we can make some money and compete with them guys. To do that, Frank relies on an unpaid volunteer crew headed by his cousin, Boom, a landscaper when he's not under the car. Scott Bloomquist doesn't have those problems. He's got Bob Miller as a backer. He really doesn't have any financial uh, worries. Hi, Allie. I'd like to find a, a guy like that that just has an open checkbook, do? I guess. Uh, it'd, make, it'd make my life a lot easier. What are you going to do? Huh? Also born into the racing life is 17-year-old Josh Richards, Kid Rocket. Named after his father Mark's ultra-successful business, Rocket Chassis, Shinston, West Virginia. It just feels like that's what I'm born to do. I just, I, I'm here to race. Josh learned to drive at the family-owned track, Interstate 79 Speedway. His mother, Tina. I know they had to uh, make some adjustments. He sat on a pillow and they had to move the seat forward and you could barely see his head sticking up. Every week I'd always get in trouble for going too fast. I mean, I was like seven years old and I'd always get in trouble <laughs> for speeding. He'd come by me about 70 miles an hour and I'd have to get out and have a talking with him a little bit. If I'm on something that, something that has wheels or it runs, I'm on a wide open all the time. Full wheeler, golf cart, you name it. I, I don't know why, I just have to have it wide open all the time. Josh is an honor student at Lincoln High School in Shinston, but he'd rather be racing. When I'm sitting there in school, I'm just thinking about what, I can, what else I can be doing. I can be racing or I can be at the shop working on the car. Saturday. That's the only thing I know, it's just racing. Josh's father, Mark, bankrolls his son's career, $150,000 a year just to stay on the road. 
Some question whether Josh would make it without his father's money. The only way to know that is, is if his dad pulled the plug and he had to do it all. If you pull the plug, you'll find out how bad somebody wants it. With the best equipment dad can buy, Josh is known in some circles as a silver spoon driver. You know, I really wouldn't call him that because he's worked for it. He was with me every summer, so, you know, he kind of give up a lot to be with his dad, so I'm going to do what I can do to help him. All in. Fathers and sons. <laughs> An echo throughout this sport. We flew back here to a racing log cabin, Virginia. I sat up on top of the hill with my dad, and I'm 16 years old, and I'd already been racing some, and he, he said, so you think you could run with these guys? I said, in one of those cars, absolutely. He looked at me and said, <laughs> walked off. On the road to Eldora, a major stop. The USA Nationals at Cedar Lake Speedway, Wisconsin. You're gonna miss the race! Nothing new, huh? <laughs> How you doing? Scott Bloomquist is late. Chubb Frank, Josh Richards, and the other drivers are already prepping their cars. Bloomquist and his crew have to hustle. You already warmed up. Just getting to a race is a grind. Right back. We've always got to prepare two race cars. They've got to both be set up for where you're going. Right now we're changing engines. We've got the rear end out of the car. We'll assess all our other hard parts. Uh, tire preparation. I'll have all of my shocks and springs are all off the car. I'll be redoing those. I'll have different ones on. That's the part of the life that's hard, is even when we're home, my husband is constantly working. Bloomquist's wife, Katrina, is used to a life in which she barely sees her husband. He practically sleeps under the car. You want the body to greet her? If he doesn't go over his car with a fine tooth comb, we're not going to win. This is like one of his first helmets he ever wore. Mary Frank, too, sees little of her husband. I see him in the mornings. We have our coffee together. And then he comes up around 6 o'clock for dinner for half an hour. And if it's a good night, I'll see him around 7.30, 8 o'clock. That's, that's how it is all week long. It's a lot of, a lot of work for him. <clears throat> Not to mention the travel. This is our home away from home. Yep. We got a dinette, we got couches, refrigerator, a lot of junk food in there. We just went on a swing out west, a little over 4,000 miles. Pretty much drove the whole thing by myself. Plus go racing, work on the cars. It can wear you out. This was the first year I met him. He was in this car. Mary Gramone did not know Chubb Frank was a racer when they met at a country western bar 20 years ago. I was introduced and I thought, oh, big deal, yeah, hi. <laughs> and we went out and danced and he um, actually gave me this great big fat juicy kiss on the dance floor and after that it was just, it was, I don't know. He had me hooked. Been together about 20 years, we've been married about three and a half, so it was kind of hard getting him reeled in, but I did it. <laughs> How's your back? It's okay. 20 years for the Bloomquist, too, not always together. When I was in college and Scott first moved to Tennessee, I was working at a tanning salon, and Scott came in, and that's how we met. We dated for five and a half years in our early or our late teens and early 20s, and we were separated for 13 years. We just needed to, I guess, go our own ways, and we probably hadn't sold our wild oats yet. During that 13-year separation, Scott was winning a lot of races and dating a lot of women. A lot of women, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of drinking, just doing uh, some things that weren't focused. One failed marriage, an affair with a Knoxville stripper, and a misdemeanor cocaine possession conviction in 1994. And you know, some, I think it took that to acknowledge the feelings that I had. I mean, you know, sometimes I think people go through life and don't even know what love is. And got back together in 2001 and got married. Been married four years. 
it's a dream come true for me. It really is, it's a fairy tale story. You ready? Josh Richards has zero interest in this kind of fairy tale. Right now, I'm, I'm focused on racing. If I was focused, focused on girls all the time, then I, I, they would hurt me racing in, in my entire life, basically, probably. At least that's what he tells us. Mark Richards has a dream for his son. Try it. He believes dirt is too much work for too little money. Yeah, turn it. You know, in dirt racing, he's in the top level. So what's the next thing, what would be the next goal? It would have to be pavement. Is NASCAR a dream? Um, yeah, that would, I mean, that would be the ultimate goal. But um, wherever I end up is where I end up, and I'm, as long as I'm racing something, I'll be happy. Now he, Scott Bloomquist, Chubb Frank, and all the others must get psyched for the heats at Cedar Lake. Everybody tucked in nice and tight, side by side. When they hit that first going to turn four, that's where they fire. A surprise at the USA Nationals at Cedar Lake Speedway, Wisconsin. And look at Josh Richards. 17-year-old Josh Richards finished first in his qualifying race beating the likes of legendary Scott Bloomquist. I'll tell you what, the biggest thing I've learned is I should have been here for practice. The texture of the dirt is so different from his last race here, it's throwing Bloomquist for a loop. I want to work on some tires tonight, and I'll be ready tomorrow. Chubb Frank did so poorly in his heat, he had to win a consolation race just to make it into the final. He'll have to race wide open. Nothing new for Chubbzilla. We're gonna be on the gas going to the front. Because you're starting 17th, you got no place to go but forward. Frank has always been an aggressive driver. Just ask Scott Bloomquist. So Frank and I have had some problems in the past. Uh, he ended up running over me a couple of times and actually spun me out. It was an accident. I took him out and he thought I did it on purpose. And then we had something go on, you know, a year ago. He was against the side of my car and actually, you know, at one time, I considered I owed him more than one. There's times that he doesn't remember when I was racing that I was probably uh, more of a no-name. He doored me and knocked me out of the way. But see, I remember all that stuff. So I don't really think that uh, he owes me. I might still owe him a couple. Here at Cedar Lake, though, Frank may not be the number one thing on Bloomquist's mind. He disclosed some big news. Uh, we've been wanting to have a child for a while, and almost had given up and uh, and she's pregnant now so she's almost four months along so you know now we we have something else really to live for that uh, you know we're really excited about yes <laughs> we're both excited it was a surprise we've been trying we've given it for two years and it after the dream after winning the show made the dream we found out we were pregnant it's wonderful with a $40,000 first prize, the USA Nationals is a big race. Richards working on McCready. Josh Richards is holding his own with the big boys. Unbelievable run so far for Kid Rocket. With an anxious father watching, he battled his way into third place. With nine laps to go, it happened. Flat tire on the one machine of Josh Richards. Caution flag comes out. Pick up the car! A flat tire. Unbelievably bad break for Kid Rocket. I'm telling you, we can't get a break. Minutes later, the same fate for Scott Bloomquist. Left rear is down on the rim, so he'll go into the pit area to change a Hoosier before he comes back out. Bloomquist struggled to finish eighth. Richards, 12th. Chubb Frank never got out of his end of the pack hole. Straight away, cruising into three, out of four, your Dale McDowell. The trophy and the glory belong to Dale McDowell, Mac Daddy, from Chickamauga, Georgia. A trophy of sorts for a Bloomquist fan. The flat tire from the race will be the centerpiece of his garage. Thank you very much. We were friends. You did good. A month away from the World 100, 
a time of year when they need to be on top of their game. Who the hell spun out, dumbass? All three drivers are struggling. <laughs> Greatest show in racing this weekend, right here. Welcome to the 34th Annual World 100. Finally, the biggest prize in dirt late model racing, the World 100, Eldora Speedway, Ohio. We know you folks have come from all over the country. 30,000 fans. This is the deal for the World 100. More than 200 drivers. Two days of bounce off the wall. The one with Ethan, we got trouble. Sparks flying racing. Now trouble down the back stretch. Speeds up to 140 miles an hour. Everybody who's anybody comes to this race. Kid Rocket. What's happening? There's action day. <laughs> uh, I got a Matt Miller door panel. And night. Eldora Speedway all the way. On and off the track. <laughs> Just pay. <laughs> First order of business for these fans, a Chubzilla thong. I'm getting one. <laughs> it's the hottest item we have in the trailer right now. I think the men buy him for the women. <laughs> He's signed a few, I know that. Off, not on. I want a thong. I want a thong. I want an autograph, too. Not a problem. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Most drivers arrive on Thursday. Thursday night, we just get here, you get your spot, and then the evening, you spend relaxing. Oh! We love jumping! <laughs> the next day, the talk of the track was Scott Bloomquist's surprise, a new car to commemorate his 25th anniversary of racing. Everybody really loves it, and we've got our new chrome collectible out this weekend, and uh, I think they're going pretty good. I've signed a number of them. Even Josh Richards had to listen to the talk while standing in line to get his pass. Bloomquist has got the silver edition out. Oh, yeah. yeah silver chrome looking. Really? Yeah, very sharp. Josh arrived a day late while his dad worked on the car. <laughs> this, this line's not too bad. I went to school. <laughs> I got out like five minutes early and left, got on a plane, and came here. Uh, and how is school? It sucks. It sucks? Other than that, it's all right. <laughs> on Friday, every driver takes two timed laps. 30 seconds of racing determines who advances and who goes home. Scott Bloomquist gets ready to test the track. I'm going to go see if they just watered the track. I'll be right back. Like it'd be fast. But one of the winningest racers in dirt track history could not foresee what would happen on his first practice lap in his brand new car. The car felt great. The car felt so good in, in turns one and two. Three, I lost the ability to steer the car. I went to turn, front end fell to the ground and went to the right, that was it. Start getting out. And I thought, uh, just sit here a little longer. All of a sudden, wow! We might have been able to fix the car. I'm sure we could have fixed the car until that hit. That's the hit that took us out for the rest of the night. He's done. Jackie like said you can't take one off a trailer, and he doesn't have one. I mean, he's done. He's out. This is the bad part about it. You know, we've worked our eyes off last two weeks getting ready and it's, that's just part of it. It's pretty sad, a half a lap. I think it's pretty obvious how fast the car was too. Yeah, that was a one race car. Not even, didn't even get to race. I'm sick, I feel like I'm about to throw up and I'm about to cry. You guys have been busy out here. <laughs> we'll just stay here and uh, turn it into a vacation. What else? I'm going to get on my civilian clothes. <laughs> That's about all that's left. Is the car demolished? Yeah. I mean, 
there were people clapping and boo, and I swear I almost got in a fight with this girl, and I'm pregnant. It's been one of those weeks. I guess I can have me a few beers. What's that? Bob Miller said, put that son of a bitch in the trailer. Here's $200. You boys go drink beer. <laughs> This comes with racing. This isn't something that happens to Scott Wilquist, but it just did, so you live with it. Chubb Frank has a new car, too. His practice laps put him on edge. The car was really good. The problem was the motor wouldn't run. Get this stuff changed and hope it's fixed. If it's not, we're in trouble. Let's see if it looks like there's any water or anything in here. Cut that other one loose. Again, again, again. Grand perfect the other night. He's just overly cautious right now. Maybe a little nervous. A bad Scott's car. Was it bad? Now it's for real. This lap will be timed. This is Chubzilla, Chub Frank. <laughs> If Frank's temperamental car does not perform, last year's winner will not be around to defend his title. Your defending winner of this event out to try and improve on round number one. Sparks come off the wall down in three and four. Good time, 15.879. <laughs> I love you. He has a good time, and that means he'll have a good position tomorrow. Sparks were flying, weren't they? Yes, they were. Now out to qualify is only 17 years of age. They call him Kid Rocket. In the number one car, this is Josh Richards from Shinston, West Virginia. His lap time at 15 and 9, 4, 6, 1, 5, 9, 4, 6. I stood up maybe a little bit, but I'm just saying, a little bit. Josh's time was 14th fastest out of 217 drivers. We waited, waited around all day just for this, two laps. <laughs> Both he and Chubb are headed for more anxiety the next day. Oh, it's butterfly time. Getting a little nervous. This is about the only place, Eldora, I get a little nervous. Saturday at Eldora. The 120 drivers left will fight for only 28 places in the World 100. They'll run a series of heats to see who gets in. It's Saturday afternoon and everybody's filing in and a lot of people are going around looking at souvenirs and finding drivers that'll sign autographs. There you go. Defending champion Chubb Frank had the seventh fastest time in yesterday's time trials. Good luck, you're sitting in a good spot. Oh, so far, we'll see how it goes. Kid Rocket, everybody get a big hand. 17 year old Josh Richards is the youngest driver in the field. All right, give us a percentage of chances of winning this thing tonight. Uh, about 110%. <laughs> Interviews and autograph sessions aside, life on the road produces some must do tasks. What are you doing? Taking out the garbage, nobody else is doing it and last-minute strategy sessions. I give them complete instructions, <laughs> move by move. And Boom will be down in the infield, and he'll give me hand signals. If the guy's right on you, you'll put your hands together like this. If you'll go like this, that means you're pulling away. We've had radios before, and they're OK, but sometimes they're distracting. Hanging over Frank, an incident the week before with the real deal, Don O'Neill. That's Don O'Neill. Oh, yeah, your name came up in a conversation we had with Chuck Frank. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I took him out intentionally. It was When you're taking somebody out intentionally, you usually hit him over here. When you, when you hit him over here, that's usually just a racing deal. Frank wanted to make amends before the first heat. I know, but I just want you to know that I didn't try to do that. Oh, I don't, I, you know, when you race hard, it's going to happen once in a while. No, I don't like to see it happen. The pressure is ratcheting up. Boy, I hate this first heat race. Track conditions are a mystery, especially in the first heat, because practice laps are not allowed today. The stakes could not be higher. There are 20 cars in each heat. Only the top four are ensured a place in the final. The motors have been fired. We're just seconds away from pulling out that first qualifying heat race. 
They're lined up side by side, two abreast, out of turn four. Green flag waves, and we are underway. Chubb Frank working the high side as he did earlier on. Close quarters for Jerry Bowersock. Nevertheless, the field works its way down the back chute. Double dive underneath and slide job in turn number four. It'll pay off. Jumpzilla goes to the World 100. With Scott Bloomquist turned spectator, Josh Richards takes the track in heat number two. The green is out and they're underway. Darren Miller gets the early lead. Kid Rock at the second take. Davenport in the wall. Driver's taking evasive action. Way too close to that wall. Field really running wild out of turn number four. Darren Miller leads the field. Then it's a who's who who's going to take second. Checker flag is going to wave this time. It goes Josh Richards. The teenager is going to his first World 100. Yeah, I don't know. I'm still kind of out of breath. That was, that was nervous. 15 laps, I know that. After a year of anticipation, the main event. <laughs> the man who created Eldora Speedway out of a cornfield. The man who dreamed up the World 100. The man who sold the track to NASCAR's Tony Stewart, Earl Baltus. This will be the last time I'll ever start the engines for you or tell you to start them. I wish every one of you could win. Listen up. Gentlemen, start your engines. But before the race even started, during ceremonial laps around the track, there's trouble for Josh Richards. Josh Richards had a flat tire on the right rear during the warm-up lap. There must be something, because I seen Johnson out there. His tire was low. Okay, let's go. Well, Josh Richards has rejoined the field in his number eight starting spot. You got something for a spare? I think somebody poked a hole in it. He has a flat. We're screwed now. As the field makes their way around turn number two, the 28 charter members of the fraternal order of Go Fast. And history is about to be made at the 35th annual World 100 and Eldora Speedway takes the green. Jump Frank running in the number five position. Josh Richards six. Jimmy Owens running seven. So I started eighth and I was up to sixth. And uh, felt the car felt really good. Josh's good feeling would not last. Number one pulls up lame at the top of turn one. Now makes the ill-fated left hand turn towards the pit area. He needs a right rear. Get a dry shaft. Dry shaft. Time hold the brake. Let off the brake. And I just broke a dry shaft, so we came back in and it was like 10 laps down. We went back out just to get some laps. Josh has no hope of winning, but Chubb Frank does. Chubbzilla smacks the wall and sparks fly, and we continue on. Benita, we got trouble. Rick Ecker, the 21 of Billy Moyer, Brian Burkhofer. The green flag comes back out the World 100 and is back underway. Frank's in the top five, but needs to make his move now. Chubb Frank closes the gap on Clint Smith. It's Bab McDowell. Bye bye. Bab gets a good run off of turn two. Fires on the afterburners, and Shannon Bab is taking the lead away from Dale McDowell. Halfway through, Shannon Bab, the Mawequa missile, Mawequa, Illinois, zooms into first. By the late stages of the race, the leaders are lapping slower cars. Frank's only hope of winning now. He navigates the traffic jam better than the drivers ahead of him. It's just like rush hour. I mean, I think that's how I got by Clint for fourth. Bab coming out of turn number four gets the two lap to go signal. He's one mile away from winning the biggest race in his career. Final corner, final time. Winning the 35th annual World 100 to Louis Clemenceau, Shannon Bab. Second place will go to Dale McDowell. Third to Darren Miller. Jump Frank fourth. Hold on. As the 18 car of Shannon Bat rolled up on the scale. There's a controversy at the scales. The 18 car of Shannon Bat, 10 pounds light at the scales. 
10 pounds light on a 2,300 pound car. Shannon Babb is disqualified. Dale McDowell bumps up to first, Chubb Frank to third. He just lost 38,000 plus the Globes. It's sad, I mean, I feel bad for him. He's probably over there puking right now, I guarantee it. That's, what, that's why they have rules. Put your hands together for Dale McDowell. We're receiving it through uh, his disqualification, but it's kind of a bittersweet. Uh, but uh, like I said, I, I, I really hate to take it this way. It went good. We weren't very good, but we ended up third now. Of course, I wanted to win, but yeah. can't always win. It wasn't as good a car as we had last year for the world, but we'll take it. Hey, thank you. Good race. Thank you. Josh Richards finished 25th in a 28-car field. But for a 17-year-old, it was a major accomplishment. We're proud of him. Real proud. What does Josh have to do on Monday? he got to go to school. <laughs> he's got to go to school is what he's got to do. But I'm just glad to even make the race my first time. So I guess I had a pretty good weekend. The races are over with. <laughs> Ten thousand dollars richer, not a bad payday. Chubb is philosophical before heading out. Nobody wins as much as you lose. You always lose more than you win. He and Mary will spend the night at a truck stop. There's been days that I probably would say that I just need to quit, but then you get to sleep on it, and the next day you're ready to go again. The kings of dirt are back on the road, heading for the next race.